uh, load proof. Uh, basically, load proof is a tool that was developed you know, by Smart Gladiator and Kenco. And um, you know, this is a tool that enables um, outbound managers you know, take pictures of the load that gets shipped from any facility. Right? And Kenco has deployed it to more than you know, I think 27 facilities at this point. And uh, you know, we have added tremendous value to all these operators and uh, I mean, outbound managers um, and um, you know, resulting in a lot of cost savings. So we have today um, Marlo Gillum, um, general manager, Kenco Logistics, um, managing PC for very important customers of Kenco Logistics and realized tremendous cost savings by implementing load uh, across their sites. And, and we have um, um, Trevor Herling, also from Kenco Logistics, with whom I worked pretty closely while uh, developing this tool and deploying this tool for Kenco's uh, distribution centers. And, and uh, you know, Trevor has been instrumental in um, helping this tool, uh, you know, roll out this tool in multiple Kenco facilities. And, and also, not only that, we are also adding um, you know, many more capabilities. Uh, again, you know, not for the sake of adding capabilities, but really solving um, the problem, right? Um, so, I mean, thank you, Marlo, for joining, and thank you, uh, Trevor, for joining. Um, Trevor, the stage is yours. Um, we'll go from there, and and you know, it's recording, and and uh, we are ready to start. Okay, absolutely. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Great to be here. It's Friday afternoon, so it's always a good time. Yeah, just picking up where Puga left off there. Had a great collaboration with Puga and the team of Mark Gladiator. Really going back over a year, and I'll cover that a bit, how, how Load Proof really got off the ground. But just a little background about Kenco and um, what we do here. Kenco is a 3PL, got a great history of almost 70 years. And we're really all over the US and Canada at this point. Half a billion dollar company, got 5,000 employees, and 28 million square foot, square foot under roof around the US. And you can see our distribution there. And we really operate in all verticals from industrial, FDA, pharmacy, fast moving consumer goods. As well as transportation, uh, and uh, and quite a few other services that will offer our three PL customers. So I work in our innovation lab, the Kinko Logistics, and we're really on trying to figure out the pain points of our customers and our our company itself. How can we improve them? How can we add value? How can we bring innovation to there in our workflow. Yeah, so one problem that, that several of our sites started mentioning, uh, actually going back a few years, this issue of chargebacks and damages. So if a uh, shipment gets to a retailer and there's damage at the other end, who's to say where that damage happened? Did it happen in transportation and shipping once it was out of our hands? We would like to say so. We would like to say that left our facility in compliance and damage free. There's no way of proving that. A lot of uh, the big box stores, uh, we, we've heard the statistic that some of these big uh, retailers get up to 13% of their income from chargebacks. And we want to keep that money in our customer's pocket, right? But up to now, there's really not been a good way of pushing back and proving that we were in compliance and that we loaded the, the merchandise damage-free. That was really where this whole conversation started. How can we document against damages and, and chargebacks? Now, now, we've got dozens and dozens of sites and some very creative people, and we've tried uh, various methods to solve the problem. Whipping out the cell phone or digital camera, take photos. And you'd save the photos, and then if there was an issue, search those. But all these solutions are problematic, right? 
as we all know, we'll take photos, we'll go on vacation, but do we have to actually copy those photos from the camera onto the computer? You know, you have to, have to make an effort to, to do that. And then what happens when those photos are on a computer in place? Are those being backed up? Even if, even if you copy those to your computer or send them to somebody's inbox, are those organized? You have hundreds of thousands of photos. Two months from now, how are you going to find that? Some of our sites were paying you know, clerks to organize the photos, rename them. It takes time. We don't have time for that. And then even if photos are organized, there's no visibility. And it might be in a share drive, so maybe a few people can see that, but there's really no good visibility across the supply chain to those photos. And we, we just knew, hey, there's gotta be a better solution than having a bunch of photos stuck in your inbox or a folder someplace that no, no one can see. So we started our lab, we did a small prototype, and we, we proved out the idea, we knew everyone would like it. But we needed more expertise. We don't build apps, that's not our, our core competence. So we reached out and came across Smart Gladiator, who got his team, and they loved the idea, and we moved forward together in partnership. And very quickly, they were able to produce the mobile apps, as well as the back-end websites, to, to realize this idea. And very quickly, uh, so I, don't, I don't have a demo, you know, uh, you, you contact us, we can uh, give you a demo, or who in his team will give you a demo, but very quickly, uh, it's, it's two parts, right? So there's a mobile app, which is for Android or iPhone devices, and it's very easy, it takes two minutes to learn, and the user out on the Warehouse floor, snap, 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 takes as many pictures as needed, enters some ident identifying information like order number, customer number, trailer number, anything that helps you find that information in the future. With a click of a button, it's uploaded to the cloud, the website, then anyone who is given access with an account can log into the website and easily search and find those photos. It works great. And the numbers really prove the success of this. We've been running for about a year now with, with this iteration of software. At 27 websites and uh, 27 warehouses using this currently, and there's a bunch more coming in to use it. And every day, hundreds and hundreds of photos are taken, just rolling in, uh, documenting all kinds of things. So it's it's been a huge success story. And once people start using it, they, they continue on and uh, find more and more use cases for it. Uh, within the warehouse. Initially, of course, we had this one vision for it that it would document outbound loads and, and also some inbound, you know, if there was damage from the manufacturer, we could take photos of it. But it's such a flexible tool that as time has gone on, people have found more and more creative uses for it. We had one situation where some trailers arrived and a warehouse damaged. So they whipped out load proof, took photos of that. Once loads are complete, ready to go out, staff will go out there and take photos of the trailer seals. This is not a document management system, but people take photos of the BOLs and other documents that are associated with the load. Building maintenance. One of our sites, all they do uh, with the tool is uh, when, when their maintenance managers go around, they'll take photos of any issues found throughout the building outside the building, the way they can be discussed. Gimbal walks, still locations. One customer has a product that's very vital. It stays within a certain temperature range. They'll take a photo of the thermometer readings just to prove that they did due diligence and stayed within the recommended boundaries for the temperature. Uh, it's just really neat to see how people have gotten creative with load proof and use it to uh, really document a ton of different scenarios. As we we're talking about the compliant load, now retailers have a lot of strict guidelines of how, how the loads show up with labeling, stacking, wrapping, 
all these different things. But we can prove that it left the warehouse behind. Documentation is so efficient. One person takes photos and you're done. You don't have to organize them. You don't have to sort or rename. We also have an electronic paper trail. People can easily see and share information to prove what has been done. This has benefits for cost savings. It can show damage free. It can show if there's been inbound damage. Reduces labor, right? We don't have to have clerks or staff managing all these photos. And there's so many success stories, and Marlo is going to share some, some more specific ones, but there was another site we were excited about. Uh, anytime there was an issue, our customer would have to contact us as a 3PL to ask, hey, what happened with that? And so there would be a lot of back and forth and to figure out what what caused a problem or if there was an issue or if it caused the issue. All this back and forth. So when we started using load proof, when sites started using load proof, the customer was able to log in and see that we had our back ends covered and that we had properly documented these loads. Complaints went down 95%. It was a stunning number, all because they knew that we were documenting things and they, they didn't have to worry. They knew that Ken was doing things properly and documenting. As I mentioned, uh, documenting trailer damages, international shipments. Those cargo containers, once they're put on ships, those things have bounced around, they've moved so many times, and very frequently there'll be damage when it reaches the other shore. We'll have that documented. Customers love the self-service portal. Go to the website and easily, it takes really no training. Go to the website, search for those photos. Uh, there's so many different benefits to it, it's, uh, it's hard to cover them all here. And uh, so anyway, in a nutshell, that's, that's really what LoadProof is. It's a great tool. And when we created it, we, we searched. And I think uh, Puga did as well, and Load, the Smart Gladiator team. There's really no other tool out there that did what we did it to in such a simple, straightforward, cost-effective manner. And it's uh, patent pending at this point. So great success story. And at this point, I want to turn it over to Marlo, he manages one of our uh, important warehouses in, in uh, Texas, and he has some great first-hand stories of how low proof has been for them. So I'll turn it over to Marlo. Uh, appreciate it, Trevor. Um, my name is Marlo Gillum. I'm the GM uh, of our operation in Dallas, Texas. And we started our um, low proof journey in the beginning of 2017. Um, we was having issues with our customers and it's mainly confidence and we couldn't prove uh, how we were sending product out the back door. Um, so of course, uh, our innovation labs, Trevor, uh, told us about low proof and we started implementing low proof on a lower scale. We was low proof from probably 30% of our orders. Uh, the success of it uh, in 2018, we roughly right at 95% of all orders going out the door. We low proof. Um, low proof has helped our customer, first of all, gain confidence in we doing the right things and we doing what we supposed to do. Uh, uh, our customers use and very dependent on low proof uh, in a normal operating business. Uh, low proof has helped our customers reduce uh, freight claims and charge back probably about 85-90% uh, of charges so a great deal of the claims was coming in uh, they, they, that, that it was a reduction of claims coming in and the chargebacks they had to pay uh, was eliminated based uh, just because of low proof um, uh, also it's a great referral to uh, our customer uh, um, not only use uh, a low proof, uh, but they also went an uh, extra step uh, the beginning, the end of 2017, and integrated uh, low proof uh, with the systems they use. Uh, so right now, at first it was just the customer service looking at low proof, 
for freight claims and chargebacks. Uh, but now their IT department has integrated load proof uh, with their AR accounts receivable departments. So whenever we look at claims, uh, the, it's able to get research at the AR level. Uh, and what they do, that eliminates a bunch of co communication distortions between uh, the, the third party logistics company, which is Kinko, and my customers. So we're able to focus on operations and a great deal of those decisions is not even making it to our site anymore, uh, which was a great deal. In our journey of implementing low proof, uh, the cost was very minimum. The training, uh, it, the, the tool is so uh, user friendly. It was simple to train our customer and for them to own uh, the tool as well as internally. Uh, right now, uh, uh, we use load proof in two different ways. When we first started our journey, we had multiple people load proofing and multiple people gaining it. Uh, as we saw how strong the tool was, it, it became a part of our operation as a check and balance, and it became designated to an associate. Uh, as well as when we uh, implemented low proof, we didn't have to increase headcount. We didn't have to increase cost. Uh, we was, uh, uh, the, the process is so simple uh, that you able to integrate this into your daily operation without increasing cost. And it uh, made our world uh, very smooth and our confidence with our customer grow extremely. Um, and like Trevor said, we first uh, started using Low Proof. We was only using it uh, on product going out the back door. Now we're looking at Low Proof. When we have to damage product, we're able to use Low Proof and document the product that's being damaged. Um, so we have documentations and able to reference to that product uh, and, and our customers able to use it as well if we're going through an audit or anything uh, of that nature. Uh, so low proof has played a, a great deal uh, uh, in our operation as well. We had in our industry, uh, we our, our OSDs, our error rates and things of that nature, uh, we was hitting KPIs, but our customers, it was a shift in our industry, our customers was really uh, making a lot of noise uh, whenever they did receive an error. We've been able to uh, go to low proof and prove that, that uh, the product we say we shipped out the door was on that low by reference to the uh, low proof. So we, we, we constantly uh, using low proof to expand uh, the way we do business uh, to increase our accuracy uh, from uh, operational level and gain confidence in our customer. Uh, and as well, our customer continue to find ways to uh, use low proof to validate that uh, uh, we are uh, aligned and doing the right thing to ship our product out the back door. That's any, any questions? Yes, yes, there are a few questions. So, uh, okay. Marco, thanks for sharing this. It's a very, very interesting story. Um, you know, I mean, no, uh, you know, from uh, uh, I'll tell you why it's interesting for me and why you know I get excited when I hear such stories because you know as a as a you know I am a uh, you know all my roles have been you know developing tools for end users, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's exactly like a baby. I mean, you you make a toy and then you throw it in front of the baby. The baby takes the toy and plays with it. You know, you get so excited. Oh my God, this baby is playing with the toy. Or the baby takes the toy, looks at it, and then throws it away and then walks away somewhere, right? <laughs> so that's how I look at it. I mean, you know, when we um, give, I mean, building that engagement, I mean, it's, it's very important as a tool developer, as a solution provider to give a tool that really, really solves a problem for the end user, right? And, and you know, I think load proof, you know, working with Kenko, Trevor, uh, and the team, I think we've, we've done a fantastic job as you know, uh, making sure that we provide a tool that solves a great problem, right? So, uh, you know, when you folks implemented this tool, right? What were some of the pushbacks you got? I mean, how was the culture in your facility before? And you know, did people say, "Hey, no, 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 we're going to waste a ton of time doing this, and I don't want to do this"? You know, this is you know, evening, four o'clock. I had to get this load out. I got to get this shipment out. Don't make me take these pictures. You know, how was this? You know, how was this received? And what were some of the challenges that you folks ran into? You know, how did you adapt to that? How did the culture change and things like? Could you please, um, you know, elaborate on that? 
Uh, yes, it was it was it was uh, simple because we was hearing a lot of pushback from our customer when we ship product. We, we was hearing a lot of pushback. We was hearing uh, 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 it was a lot of freight going out the back door that wasn't right. And we know from a site level, we were shipping it out correct. And we know we uh, uh, just how we own quality, our quality culture at our site. Um, so I first, when we first implemented it, we started small. I started with uh, the verifiers, the quality auditors here at the site, because they understand and they feel the same frustration I feel when we know we audited and checked and pushed it out the door. So uh, uh, our initial implementation in presenting it to them, they was excited because now we could, now they from an associate level, was they could go back and say, no, nah, we shipped this out right, we checked this, and this product right here. So uh, a picture worth a thousand words, and that's what, uh, 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 that's how it, uh, uh, it took off here at the site, because the associates, uh, they take pride in their work, and they was able to prove what they were saying was right, versus our customer, they uh, found they self at, in, in the middle when uh, uh, they end customer was complaining about freight or things of that nature. Uh, but now our associates was able to, to, to it's more like a told you so moment, uh, but they, they, they was able to prove the same pride they put in their job. So uh, we started off small with the verifiers and then it just took off from there. And uh, once the, 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 we shared the same stories, we used it in gamble walks um, and, and when, it, it, it was easy buy in for the associates because they know this was a a a, a, a gatekeeper to, to to so we can eliminate uh, some of that distortion coming back to us and our customers question us about some of the work we know we was producing out that was correct. Awesome, great. Um, thanks for the detailed answer. So the next question I have is: Is it is it? I mean, you know, it's I, I understand. You know, we may not be able to share dollar values here. What would be the best way to quantify this, right? The reason why that quantification is important is because when people realize, hey, you know, out of, you know, let's say, you know, 100 loads we shipped per day, you know, we implemented this and we are seeing tremendous value, you know, 90% of the shipments that we ship, right? Um, I mean, are, if, if, if possible to some kind of a cost savings, you know, that'll be great. If not, you know, you know, what would be the, you know, uh, percentage improvement or what would be the, you know, if you could please uh, quantify in some way that users can, you know, the end users and the audience can relate to, you know, that'll be great. Um, I would say um, um, it, it, it's a simple answer. Um, I would say look at the chargebacks, but from a third party, we really don't touch those chargebacks. It's, kind of, it's, it's something the customer owned that's very sensitive. But I would like to look at the chargebacks that my customers was, was paying in 2016 versus 2017. And I think you will see a world of difference. Um, uh, I, I had my customer give some feedback um, and I shared it with Trevor and they was talking about how the two wowed and changed their quality culture at the site because now they was able to save a, a great deal of cost because of low food. And that's why they uh, is so dependent. I would say it will go back to charge uh, those chargebacks and freight claims. Uh, all you got to do is compare uh, before low proof and after low proof. It'll be uh, a telltale. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, Trevor, do you have any comments on that, Trevor? Um, yeah, I just kind of say, you know, if I first heard about this tool, I would assume you're taking, you know, three or four photos per load, but Marlo, I you know, I know I was looking at your site's profile. Uh, you know, your team's taking 20 to 40 photos per load. Um, what, what are they taking photos of? Let's get repeat that, please. I, I saw your site is taking on average about 30 photos per load. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering if you could explain to the audience, what are they taking photos of specifically? Okay. Uh, well, uh, we... we um, of course, it was a learning curve with load proof. Um, at first, we was taking pictures of the load, taking pictures of the packing list as we shipped it out. And as we grew with load proof, we realized how crucial of a tool it was. So we started taking all four angles of the uh, of the load because it was easy for the customer uh, could expand. And we also got smart on how we zoomed in. 
uh, we, we, we made sure we uh, get all angles uh, of the load sitting on the floor. And even some customers like Amazon, we we'll even take a load proof of the product on the tr truck. So as we load that product on the truck, we'll show how their product was loaded on the truck. Um, so if there's any uh, claims come about, they have a stronger reference tool. Um, so that's why you, you may see an increase in our lows. And again, we, we, we grew from at first doing 30, 40% of all of our outbound shipments being low proof to uh, aiming at 100% of our shipments. And we roughly there, we have some of our parcel uh, products shipping out that we uh, 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 in the process of, of wrapping our hands around with low proof, but everything that's shipping LTL for truckloads get low proof. Awesome, awesome, great. Thank you, thank you for the detailed answer. Um, so, what are what are some of the future opportunities for load proof? I mean, more in the sense that you know, what other problems we can help you folks solve? You know, like you know, is there is there uh, is you know, I mean, obviously, right? As a as a solution provider, we are always looking to improve the tool that's already provided. You know, if there is any way to automate the whole thing, right? If there are people standing and taking pictures, and if there is an opportunity mm -hmm. to automate the whole thing, so that you know, that I mean, obviously, when a person stands there and takes pictures, you know, it, it creates a little bit of a bottleneck, right? People are, mm -hmm. if they are busy, they want to load the truck as fast as possible, and then you know, um, send the truck, and then give the next truck to the dock door, and then start loading again. It's going to slow down a little bit, or you know, at least that's one area where I see, you know, maybe we could, you know, uh, you know make the process quicker and faster, right? What else, you know, is there any anything else that would help you folks? You know, one one thing that we initially talked about, at least, you know, I haven't been exposed to, you know, many end users that are using Loco. And um, we were talking about, um, you know, Trevor, if you remember the discussion that we had, if we can add GPS coordinates to the pictures that are taken. So we know exactly where these pictures are taken from, right? For example, if it's a load that's leaving from, let's say California to Atlanta, and if we can capture GPS coordinates, we know, hey, this is the load that left this position. That's the same load that showed up in Atlanta. Hey, look at this before and after, right? Something like that. So is there, wow. is there any any problems like that that we can solve that will add, you know, tremendous value for you folks? Uh, yes, I could think of a, a few. Um, um, if we can, I know this may be long term, uh, if we can add a recording, uh, um, uh, especially if it can pick up audio, that'd be ideal because uh, on sensitive customers and sensitive loads, you just want to capture that uh, video and audio and kind of talk about some of the details. You know how that product uh, left the building and if your customer could reference to it. Again, um, a picture and just catching it in action is worth a thousand words. Another one would be, uh, my second one would be a Zoom. Uh, so if we can zoom in um, on some of the stuff on the load, uh, that'll be ideal. Uh, lastly, um, and it's just thinking outside the box, uh, we, we, the, the, the load proof was created for outbound loads. If we can um, customize checklists, uh, you know, different industry, different sites uh, may require different things. But if we can ha have about five uh, 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 checklists on the load, uh, before you start load proofing, uh, that can follow along with that load. That'll be ideal. Yeah, well, I'll uh, I'll jump in here. Uh, we we try to keep on top of our customers' needs and um, what what people are needing. And in the future, I think we definitely want to put that video capability, record video. Uh, but I I don't think Marla knows about this. We've got a big update that's almost ready to release right now. And it's got uh, five or ten big changes in it, so um, you'll be able to add check boxes, oh. drop downs. Um, there, if multiple batches of photos are taken, like if you take a batch of photos and then someone, the truck driver on the other end, takes a batch of photos of the same load, if they're the same order number, then that will be connected in the system, so you can easily find a batch of batch of photos. Uh, additionally, if a batch of photos is marked as a quality issue, like if there's an issue with it, someone is immediately going to get an email that they need to go and look at that. Oh, awesome. That could be you notified, it could be your customer notified that, hey, there's something you to get on immediately, so so you don't have to contact them. So that's just a, that's just a snapshot of some of the updates. So 
No okay, court. that's awesome. That's awesome. That's about two of the three. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. Yep. <laughs> right. I, I think the next question is, so what systems have you folks integrated Loadproof into? How that has been, you know, helpful and, you know, what are, what are some of the benefits, you know, things like that? I haven't, um, I haven't dealt with the system firsthand. I have uh, uh, received feedback from a customer. They integrated um, uh, low proof into SalesPad, and that's the system the uh, accounts receivable department use on day end uh, uh, from at the customer site. And what they do, if they have any claims, they could pull the pictures up and it can uh, challenge the customer right then. And uh, again, they never make it to customer service at the corporate office, uh, the customer corporate office. It doesn't come back uh, to IDC. Uh, so it just, is it, it eliminate a, a, a great deal of distortion uh, uh, from a top tier level. And again, we able to focus on doing what we do best and just getting the product out the back door. Great, great. I mean, so people don't have to keep chasing pictures. Exactly. It's all available in one place and it's integrated into the system. The URL, it, they just have to click the URL and then they see the pictures. Uh, is that, and, and that was the idea. So the customer service department and AR department, of course, the, uh, our customer service department uh, with our customer, we was going at it. When we brought in low proof, it eliminated noise coming to us. And the AR department from their corporate department and their customer service was going at it. Once they saw how powerful uh, Low Proof was, they integrated it uh, over uh, at the corporate site and it eliminated a bunch of noise internally. Uh, uh, so now customer service is able to focus on what they need to focus on. They have, don't have to chase pictures and things of that nature. So it, it, it continues to uh, grow and be beneficial throughout the whole supply chain. Yeah, yeah, awesome, great. I mean, no, we have um, post holdings that's, uh, you know, um, signed up, sorry, sorry, um, signed up as a customer. Um, you know, um, I, I think, I mean, that's all the questions I have. Um, anything else? No, uh, we, 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 we want to continue to be uh, creative. Uh, again, a low proof done became our way of life. Um, um, we making sure that if a load is not low proof, we put yellow dots on the uh, order every time it's low proof. If that yellow dot uh, isn't on their order, their order do not get shipped. That's how important load proof is to um, our system. So we uh, 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 integrated uh, visual tools that lean thinking along with load proof, and it's just the way we live. And uh, again, we able to uh, enjoy what we work at because uh, uh, we focusing on the right things. Awesome. I mean, no, uh, I think this brings the, um, you know, this is the end of the webinar. I mean, no, thanks for, thanks for joining and thanks for sharing your story on using load proof and how, uh, you know, it has added value to operation. Um, Trevor, you have anything to add? No, I, I loved hearing Marla's experiences, you know, kind of like Puga, I'm, I'm two or three steps removed from the actual operation. So to, to know that's being used and, you know, uh, that's such a integral part of the operation. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that you have to see to believe. Uh, people have a hard time believing that something so simple could make such a revolutionary difference, but it's true, and that's what's got you know sites uh, joining several new sites every month, just coming on board, wanting to take advantage of the benefits of it. So, thanks, Marlo, for sharing. Great to be on the school. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for um, Sandeep. Do you have anything to add? Okay, good. Yeah, thank you for thank you for joining and thank you for making this webinar a great webinar. Um, I'll go ahead and end the end the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.